I've been wanting a set of racks for the Colorado for ages now. I started making a set just before we bought the house, but I wasn't able to get them finished before the first round of renovations. Since we're gearing up for more work on the house soon, I figured now's the time to dust off all my metalworking tools and set them up in the shed. I'll be able to finish off the rack so we can collect our own building materials like long pieces of timber and sheets of wall cladding. This is the first video in a two-part series. I designed the racks in SolidWorks which I no longer have access to but I managed to save a PDF copy of the manufacturing diagrams. I'm still happy with the original design which I've reproduced in Fusion 360 but I think I'll add some removable longitudinal members to span between the front and rear bars to support sheet materials. The two rear brackets will be semi-permanently mounted in the tray with M10 bolts, two of which will go through the floor of the tray and the other two into the side. And the rear frame will be able to slide in and out of the brackets and will be secured with an M12 bolt with a handle welded to it through each bracket. The front bar will mount directly to the existing headboard on the front of the tray. I'd already started on the front bar which, as I said, is designed to sit on top of the headboard behind the rear window. It's from 50x4mm square hollow section tube with end taps from 50x8mm flat bar at 100mm long and mounting taps from 40x8mm flat bar at 70mm. I also added another piece of flat on the lower face of the bar that sits on top of the headboard to distribute the load in three places. The headboard is made from pressed sheet metal which is surprisingly strong and I'm confident it can take the weight of anything I'll be transporting. I've added some crushed tubes inside the headboard frame to support the bolts when the bar is installed. Construction of the bar was mostly finished two years ago so all that was left to do was add a couple of tabs for the longitudinal bars to mount to. The mounting tabs are just some 50 by 8 mm flat bar cut to 60 mm in length with a hole and some rounded off corners. Rather than take the sharp edges off with the grinder, I decided to temporarily install the linisher in the shed that had been sitting unused under the house. It's less noisy and far more effective than the grinder for taking away the hurty bits. Once I have a workbench layout finalised for the shed, I'll mount it on a bench top, which will be a far more efficient use of space. Once all the tabs were cleaned up, I decided that it'd be best to weld on the tabs when I've made the rear bar and I'm ready to make the longitudinal bars. Stay tuned for that in part two of the series. The rear brackets are made up of a 65 by 6 mil square section tube cut to 300 mil. They have a bent piece of 65 by 10 mil flat bar to mount it to the side of the tray and another flat piece 250 mil long running along the bottom towards the front of the vehicle. The bottom piece of the bracket is bolted through the tray to the underside using some large flat washers underneath to spread the load and nylock nuts to secure them. I needed to cut the bottom pieces out in a couple of spots to allow them to clear these bolt heads. So I marked them up and then dragged out the plasma cutter, which I'd never used before. I thought I'd make a template for the cut from some scraps, so using an offcut of MDF as a guide, I had some practice to gauge the speed of the plasma cut and to make sure the MDF wouldn't just catch fire. Once I was convinced the MDF was okay to use, I cut out this template from it using a 35mm Forstner bit, which seemed to be the right size when taking into consideration the diameter of the plasma cutting tip. I then cleaned up the template to the shape I needed and made those cuts.
the cards came out all right except that one and after a little bit of linishing to take off the slag I took to them with the finger file to smooth the inner surface as best I could. Once they were done, I put the pieces in place in the tray and worked out where I wanted my mounting holes. I managed to get one of the guys at my old job to bend these pieces for me before I left since they had a huge bending break there. I drilled the mounting hole positions and transferred them to the tray. I've used nutserts on the side of the tray since there is no access to the inside of the tray panel and they shouldn't see too much loading with the added bracing we'll have on the rear bar frame. To install the M10 nutserts I used a 13.5mm drill to make the holes. Then I inserted them into place. And of course I did the other side as well. I then drilled out the pilot holes on the brackets to 11mm to clear the 10mm bolts. For good measure, I deburred the holes with a countersink bit. I temporarily mounted the side brackets in place so I could mark out the rest of the parts and worked out where I needed to drill the holes through the bottom plates and through the floor. There was a sheet metal cross member underneath the tray I had to drill through and from underneath I could see that there was another screw head that I needed to avoid down there. I couldn't come up with a way of measuring where the screw was, so I just took a guess and hoped for the best. Luckily that was enough to avoid it. The side plates were a little twisted, so I tried to mark the bottom plates in a position that would help straighten them. I marked where I wanted the bottom plate and took away the side plate to decide where the holes needed to be. Once the holes were done, I linished bevels on all the edges of the parts where they were to be welded together. I also prepped the upright tubes and a couple of galvanised M12 nuts so I'd be able to weld them on and secure the rear bar frame with M12 T-bolts. I then bolted the brackets in place in the car to tag weld them together and lined up the upright tube and tacked it in as well. I measured up a small piece of round tube that will be used to tie down materials to the racks and helps to line everything up while I'm welding the assembly together. The welder kept throwing the breaker in my power box so I was limited to laying down beads about 30mm long at one time. We're still trying to line up an electrician to come and wire the shed so I'm using an extension lead from the house in the meantime. I haven't done a lot of welding before, but I found that once you have the right gear, it's not that hard to get a half decent finish on your welds. Often the hardest part is working out how to hold your workpiece in position while you're welding it. The grinder helps hide any ugliness. Once the first bracket was done, I measured up the second bracket for the little tie down piece and cut it to length. Then I attacked it all in place. Back on the bench, I zipped up the rest of the welds and stuck the M12 nut on the back.
The brackets also have a diagonal brace for some added longitudinal strength. I marked the angles I needed and made the cuts. Then I used masking tape to hold them in place while I tacked them. And welded them all around on the bench, throwing a breaker for good measure. Once the brackets were done, I bolted them in place in the tray to prepare to make the rear bar frame. But that will have to wait till the next instalment of this riveting saga. I haven't uploaded in a while due to some health issues and a few other projects going on at the same time. But if you liked watching my projects, make sure you come back again for more in the future. Thanks for watching to the end, I really appreciate it. If you like the cut of my jib and reckon I deserve a beer for my troubles, check out my PayPal link in the description to make a one-off donation. Also, if you're in the market for some reasonably priced gear for photography and videography, click my affiliate link with Newer and check out their wares. Here's cheers.